it's all about true authenticity, like being able to find your true self in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end, and focusing on what drives you. And you know, those who are waiting for you at the end, there is no better feeling than cut, hitting the beach and seeing the ones that you love, you know, congratulate you for something that you've trained for six, seven months for. many pain points and lows that you hit over a 32 mile span, whether it's five hours, six, seven, eight, or nine, everyone hits their low points and it's how you come out of that. You know, it's the age old saying of, it's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get up. And over 32 miles, you gotta keep getting up. I first crossed the channel like 20 years ago when I was originally got into paddling when I was like 40 years old. I thought that the Catalina Classic was beyond my capabilities. But then I knew Mike Eaton, and I remember when he did it when he was 65, and, and I remember telling him, man, I hope that's me someday. And now 25 years have passed, and here I am. Well, it's just an incredible accomplishment to do it. You know, uh, other races, guys can actually do them off the couch. If you try to do Catalina off the couch, you're gonna have one of the most horrible days of your life. I've been, I've been at the race since I was one. Uh, I've been at every finish line on the other side of it. So my whole life has been building to being on the up opposite end and coming in around that buoy. So it was really special. I, it was really emotional at the end and it's fun to come back for a year or two. And this year my dad will be on my boat. So he was on my boat for my first crossing ever, the Rock to Rock. And now he's gonna be on my boat for my second Catalina. And I'm just so stoked about it. It's so special to do that with him. You know, when you're in the race, I, I've talked about it before, but it's sort of a Zen thing where you just kind of like, you just got to get in your flow and, and not think about other stuff. And, and you just got to be in the moment. If you're not in the moment, if your head's elsewhere, it's awful. is just to get through it without getting too uh, angry and just being able to finish with a smile because last year got so tough and I think a win for me this year would just be finishing still stoked and kind of mentally just doing better for myself and beating my time from last year. satisfaction of you know training building up for something and hopefully accomplishing it um, but then there's the whole other kind of like special side of the race you know I remember when I did my first crossing and it was beautiful conditions and I was about halfway between you know two harbors and uh, the R10 and I kind of looked up I was on my knees and I, I looked up looked back at Catalina that was fading away and then looked ahead at PV and kind of realized I was just in the middle of nowhere and I just thought that was, you know, I kind of got chills when I was in the middle of the race. And it was weird because I was just head down, battling out. And then I got, you know, I kind of just got overwhelmed with some chills for, you know, 10 seconds. And then it was gone. And
thing in this race is going from the R10 to the pier. I mean, that's, a lot of people say that's where the race starts. I don't know, let's be honest. I mean, you're at 23 miles, you hit the R10, you've been going pretty hard, and now you gotta like beeline it to that pier as fast as you can. That's tough. I mean, that's, that's where you start banging your head on the board and, and start making deals with yourself. And, and you just got to sort of get past those and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Is, I would say maybe three quarters in and you can start seeing land and different landmarks and then it just doesn't move. It doesn't move. You're sitting there for an hour or so and you're like, I just want to be done. You can already taste your nice cold beverage that you're going to have at the finish line. and uh, But then something clicks and you just hammer down and, and get to the finish line. You know, Max is, you know, he's a friend now too. And he taken, he's taken me out to the R10 a few times to figure out what lines are good and where to point for to get into the pier. So it's, there's a lot of competition in the channel, but you know, when you're paddling and training and stuff, it's all just, you know, having a good time with friends. Coming from Ohio, you know, we don't have anything like this. And so to be welcomed into such an incredible community, you know, my good buddy Cody Strange actually uh, gave me my South Bay local card last year because of completing the 2021 Classic. So to be welcomed into the community and be localized because of that is something that I couldn't ask for more. And to be part of this, you know, is one of the best things in the world. As soon as you hear that, that, that horn, you cross that line, it's an instant relief. You see family on the pier, family on the beach, uh, my dad and brother on the boat. So just getting big hugs and uh, just, it's, just, it's just a fun experience all around. You know, I'm really stoked to keep going in this sport, and I just have always said that uh, retirement's for jobs, and I'm, I'm not going to quit this sport until the doctors or the mental health experts tell me that I can't do it anymore.